Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making an improved drilling guide. Last year I made a video about how to make a drilling guide. This is going to be kind of an extension of that. So if you haven't watched that one, this is going to be an improved version so you can skip that one altogether. Anyway, what's the point of a drilling guide? Well, so if you've got a knife that you're making and then you're going to be putting a handle on it, you need to drill holes through the tang, which obviously has already happened in this particular uh, knife, and then you need to drill those holes correspondingly into the handle scale material. You want them to be really square and you want them to line up exactly with the uh, handle scales and the tang of the knife. So a drilling guide is something that will help you if you don't have a really you know well equipped shop um, you know professional knife makers have all kinds of fancy equipment to drill nice square holes uh, but if you're doing it in a um, you know, a shop that doesn't have a mill and all kinds of stuff like that, like I've got, uh, you may want to make a drilling guide. So in this video, we're going to show a drilling guide that's quite similar to the one I did last year, but that has a lot more holes and so it's uh, much more versatile. So if you want to reduce this to its simplest terms, this is just a block of steel with some holes drilled in it, but the holes are very square, in other words, perpendicular to the work. Um, and they're very carefully located. So we're gonna show you uh, some ways of doing that without using super complicated tools. All right, let's jump right on into it. Now you'll need a drill press to make the jig properly, but the cool thing is that even if you don't have much machinery in your shop, you can make a tool like this at a friend's. It doesn't take a lot of machinery. Then take the tool home and make a bunch of nice knives with nothing but a hand drill and a file. I'm using a piece of 1 inch by 5 8 inch 01 steel. You can buy 01 steel online and heat treat it fairly easily. But if you want to go even simpler, you can use mild steel, which is way cheaper and which you can find almost anywhere. Now it won't last as long, but you'll still be able to make quite a few knives before you wear out your tool. I've made plans for the jig, not that you couldn't figure this thing out for yourself, which will be available on my Patreon page. And that, of course, is available to anybody who supports this channel on Patreon. This is precision ground steel, meaning that it's very flat and very precisely sized. So I'm sanding it on this old machinist block, mostly to get the rust off, not to flatten it. It's already nice and flat. There's one little flaw in one corner of the stock, but I'll just leave it there. It won't hurt anything. I'll begin in earnest by laying out the holes. I start this process by brushing on some layout fluid. In some senses, this is the most critical part of the whole project. If you don't get it right here, everything else is kind of a waste of time. We're aiming to produce an array of holes that are laid out so that I can drill three holes on a handle with several different spacing layouts, or I can do two hole handles, again, with several different possible spacing dimensions. This will allow me to drill handles in almost any conceivable size of handle, from a small neck knife to a big competition chopper. Hey, by the way, let me mention that in an upcoming video, I'll actually use this drilling guide to make a knife. And uh, then, as soon as I've done that video, I'll send this drilling guide to uh, some randomly chosen uh, Patreon supporter, so it's not really a raffle or anything, but we're going to take some of the recent uh, Patreon subscribers, people who are giving back and helping this channel, and we'll, uh, we'll throw something your way. I'll start by using a prick punch to locate my first hole. That's a punch that's got just a needle sharp tip. All the other holes will be laid out with reference to this one, so the spacing is all consistent. Using this old divider that I inherited from my dad's great uncle, an engineer for the Louisiana Department of Roads about 50 years ago, 
I'll mark each of the holes in the array along the center line. Once they're marked, I'll carefully locate them using that same little prick punch. Once I've got those teeny little holes punched, I'll use them to locate a bigger center punch, which will make a hole big enough to guide the drill into the correct spot. The whole key to this thing is that we're going through this really structured process to locate these holes as tightly as we can. By the way, if you're not exactly sure how this guide would fit into an actual knife making project, look for me to use it in an upcoming video. Then I'll give it away randomly to one of my newer Patreon supporters. It's not a raffle or anything, just a little side benefit for helping out the channel. After working my way through the array, I'll head to the drill press. I'll actually show a couple of different approaches to the drilling step. It might seem like, you know, why not just mark the locations with a sharpie or something and blast away with the drill. Well, the whole point of all this falderall is that I want these holes drilled as square to the guide and as close to their perfect location as possible. Get them right now, and we never have to think about them again. Screw them up now, and every single knife made from this guide will be screwed up too. All things being equal, a drill will walk when you start your hole, meaning that it'll skate around a little before it starts cutting. That will likely cause two problems. First, you won't get your hole where you meant it to be. And on top of that, if the drill enters at an angle, which it may, your hole will wander off into parts unknown at you know, 93 degrees or 88 degrees or whatever. We want it dead on 90 degrees. So first I'm going to use a drill vise to hold the guide. This will make sure that it stays square with the spindle of the drill. It also gives some mass to hold it steady. I'll begin by drilling a pilot hole with a spotting drill, a drill made for accurately starting holes. The spotting drill is very short and rigid and it drills exactly where I tell it to. The cutting edge of the drill is also ground at a slightly different angle from a normal drill, which allows it to channel the tip of the drill right smack down into the center of the hole. Now, using method number one, I'll get up really close and just eyeball the drill into a perfect location using a magnavisor to help my pitiful aging eyes. Then I'll drill a small divot, just enough to guide the next drill into position. Out with the spotting drill, in with a regular old Home Depot 3 16th inch twist drill. Now I'll use the spotting drill hole to locate the 3 16th inch drill so that it's nice and square. This requires a bunch of tinkering, bumping the quill up and down while staring at the tip until I can see that it's not deflecting at all as I lower the quill into that little divot made by the spotting drill. Once I've got it absolutely where I want it, I'll clamp it down to the table and drill on down through the steel using tapping and drilling lubricant to make the drill happier. Now in the next hole, I'll do things slightly differently just to show a different way of doing it. In this case, instead of eyeballing everything into place and clamping the vise down, I'll lower the drill, turn it on, and let the rotation of the drill vibrate the drill into a square position. This isn't much of an issue for the spotting drill, but with the longer 3 16 inch drill, it's pretty critical. Key thing is, as long as it starts in the right place and the vise isn't too heavy and isn't anchored to the table, just that little wobble of the drill is enough to kind of jiggle the vise around until it stabilizes in a nice perpendicular location. Repeat the same process with the 3 16 inch drill and there goes another nice square hole. In a perfect world, your vise is always anchored to the table. For the process I'm showing here to work correctly, however, it has to float. If you aren't careful though, the drill can snatch the vise and start making your day really exciting. So, once you've got it located properly and you feel confident that it's going in square, keep it firmly anchored with your hand. This is not a real safe technique to use on big powerful industrial drills because they can overpower your hand and do all kinds of nasty things to you. But, 
For a small home shop press like this, not a problem. So we repeat the spotting and drilling steps on down the line until all the holes are drilled. Using a countersink, I'm going to chamfer the edges of the hole on the side that you'll be drilling from when you finally use this on a knife. Guess what? That's the other side of the drill guide from the one that you've been drilling all these holes into. Why? Because if the drill's walked at all, the location of the outboard side may be a little bit off. Whereas, on the side that we drilled from, they'll be as close to the true location as we could get using this method. Two purposes to the chamfers. First, they help admit your drill smoothly. And second, you'll always know which side of the guide you're supposed to start drilling from. Next, we'll move on to the optional part of this project, heat treating. If you make the guide as I did from 01 or some other hardenable steel, now's the time. If, on the other hand, you made it from mild steel, which is not capable of being hardened, then the project's pretty well finished for you. I'll be hardening my guide by heating it to 1500 Fahrenheit in my heat treating oven, then quenching it in peanut oil. You could do this with a forge or even a torch of some sort to achieve more or less the same results. I'll soak the guide at 1500 for 30 minutes. Now this soak time isn't entirely necessary, but it will result in slightly higher hardness than just heating to cherry red and dropping it in a bucket of oil. There are a lot of complexities to optimizing your heat treat that we're not going to get into here. Suffice it to say that if you heat it to cherry red and quench it in oil, you'll probably be all right. After the quench, I test it with a file to make sure the quench was successful. Yep, it's screaming hard. So now it's into the tempering oven at 350 degrees for a couple of hours. This will reduce the glass hard brittleness of the guide, turning it into a fully functional tool. After tempering, I'll clean the scale off with sandpaper. This reveals that the guide warped a tiny little bit, a pretty common thing to happen during heat treating. Now the warp only amounted to around a thousandth of an inch across the entire guide, so this wasn't a problem to remove with sandpaper. And a quick test on a piece of scrap micarta to make sure it works. The basic idea is to use whichever set of holes is appropriate for the size of knife that you're making. Clamp it down on the stock and then drill away. You can do three holes at a distance of one and a half as I did here, one and three quarters or two inches, or you can do two holes at a ton of different distances from one hole to the next. You can use it on a drill press, of course, but a simple hand drill works just fine too. All right, so there's one critical disadvantage of this particular drilling guide. Uh, it does have a lot of different locations that you can drill the holes, uh, which makes it better than the drilling guide that I showed last year. But it's limited, like the one I did last year, to only one size of drill. So if you wanted to make a 3 sixteenths hole, it's great. If you want to make a quarter inch hole or whatever it might be, uh, you can't do it with this drilling guide. So in an upcoming video, we're going to do a, an even more fancy schmancy version of this that will allow you to drill a variety of different sizes of holes. So look for that in the coming weeks. All right. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.